I declare in front of these people in the name of Jesus Christ, I depend so much on you. Lord, my best moments in the spirit were when I, I was clueless, weak and empty, and I threw myself at you. I declare that publicly, Lord, I'm a nobody. I'm worthless, and in fact, not only am I ineffective, but I'm harmful. If I were to speak or do in the name of Jesus without the anointing of God, so, Lord, let the gift of grace be upon us. Let the virtue and the fruit of the blood of Jesus, the seed of God, bear in this place upon us. Oh, how I pray for the strong arm of the Lord to flex his muscle, to wield the sword, to send the fire, to bang like a hammer and impress on our hearts. Oh, I pray from beginning to end, top to bottom, this evening, this people, supernatural of your spirit, anointed, planted seed. Lord, I speak now as an oracle of God because you've charged me to, but only in the spirit for the glory and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Holy Ghost, fire. Woo! Bobrish de Bakabade. I am on fire tonight. I got angels all around me. I can feel them. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Now what does that mean? What's the impact of that? That means he owns us. That means he possesses us. Not just where he can tell us what to do and we'll do it because we're owned by him, but that he'll make his abode in us. That's apostolic. Not building our house for him to visit, but building his house for him to live in. I call on the name and the powers of my God to uphold my words, which are his words. I pray this will be a revolution. I pray it will be deep and wide in the Holy Ghost. I pray for you that there shall be a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. Woo! I pray there will be a difference from now on. Possession. When God possesses a people, that people then becomes the apostolic fulfillment of the apostolic burden, which is this, the fullness of of Christ. I'm looking for a house in which I can just be myself and not just act in accordance with your little system of decorum. So that as soon as I cross the bounds into my own freedom, you put up religious restrictions. That's because I'm only visiting your house. That's revival. Build me a house after my own image and I'll possess it. That's revolution. And I declare that the devil does not like what's going on in this room, but something's happening because the Spirit of God's on me. What are you threatened with when you're dead? That's total freedom. And that is the call of God to because a revolution must be led by a revolutionary, and a revolutionary is sold to the death. The key of David is the willingness to live or die in protest to the law of sin and death. From now on, a revolutionary is this. Every aspect of your life is lived in protest to the law of sin and of death. Friend, if you're not dead, but you still want to seek God, that's witchcraft, trying to manipulate on some other basis besides the loyalty that God demands in the first commandment. I pray for you in Jesus' name that God will bless you and come to you and give you confidence and strength and take your fears away. I pray that you'll rise up in this hour. This is the day of His power and you shall volunteer freely. I pray the grip of God will come on you and you'll do things that you can't do. I pray that God's sovereign grace will overshadow you and things will just start to happen and lead the way and that what we pray for with passion we will accept by faith today and you will be changed. Luke 10, verse 3. First word in my Bible says, go. If it's not sent of God, it won't be in the fullness of God got to have divine origin. Behold, I send you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no money belt, no bag, no shoes. Greet no one on the way. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace be to this house. Friends, you, you own nothing. 
That's surrender. That's why with such freedom and ease, he can give the simple instruction, heal those in it who are sick. Just heal them. Well, what about, oh, yeah, and it doesn't always happen. Oh, I just pray for them and just trust you, right? No, you don't pray for them and trust me. Heal them. Just as easy as I tell you not to carry a purse, just it's the same ease I tell you to heal them. If you're walking, he's saying, in new covenant reality, you have dominion restored to you. The threat to new covenant dominion is not the devil, it's the flesh. And then the flesh lets the devil in. Half of our own person can be counseled by the Lord, the other half counseled by the devil. That's why we have so many Christians with devils. Because we got so many Christians with flesh that's not crucified. And that's why we need such unique deliverance sessions that interview them for three days, finding out what level of masonry is sticking on them. What on earth is this? Jesus became a curse for us. It is not the need of interviewing deliverance sessions. It is the need of a gospel that is true, yes. that has guts, and that is real. Yes. Praise Jesus forever. I've given you authority. I am restoring the human race. I'm restoring them to the image of God. It is not human to be ruled by a demon. It is not human to be ruled by depression. It is not human to be ruled by sickness and disease. We are meant to be ruled by nothing, nobody, nowhere, except for God Almighty himself, the Father, Jesus Christ, the Lord, his Son, and the great and mighty, wonderful, gentle, all-powerful hurricane, Holy Ghost. But it's about time we start taking dominion where we are supposed to take dominion and start walking this earth like Christians, like believers in Jesus, who redeemed us not just so we would not go to hell, but he redeemed us to restore who we are. I say to you, paralytic, rise up and walk. It's not just human to be forgiven of sin. It is human to raise the dead. Because death is an enemy, a creature lower than our feet. Cancer is an enemy, a creature lower than our feet. And the devil that causes it are powers that are creatures lower than our feet. So for him to redeem us means to restore us to dominion over these animals. And at the end of that passage it says, They glorified God! Now that is the point of a man taking authority. The response is you giving glory to God. Not giving glory to you but giving glory to God. That's why men take dominion by the blood of Jesus. So God gets the glory because we have this treasure in earth and vessels so that the surpassing greatness of the power may be of God and not of ourselves. Only when we take dominion is God glorified properly. Only when we exercise our authority as believers in Jesus Christ is he glorified. Well, you know, that really feeds into pride. No, it doesn't. Pride exalts self. Humility exalts God. Pride says, pride says, oh no, not little old me. That's pride. Humility obeys. If you obey, it will require self-death. That's new covenant. We can be possessed of God and walk in authority. I have given you authority. It is time to rip away the veil of shame that is there because of pride and shine with the authority that I've given you. Trust me, he says, it will take all the humility you could possibly have to shine the way I want you to shine. It takes humility and death to operate in the kind of power God wants us to operate in. Give God the glory because that's the nature of your dominion. Are you hearing that part? The nature of our authority is to give glory to God. 
when a human being is dead, giving all glory to God by taking dominion, then God gets the fame and the attention for being God. Why are you looking at us as if something in us we made this man whole today? It's the God of your fathers who raised Jesus Christ from the dead, who made this man whole before you today. Listen, as far as I'm concerned, we can walk, we're all, we have the authority. It's not when you die you have the authority, it's when you die you can relate to the authority you already have. It's not when you die you get the authority, you've already got the authority. It's when you die you relate to it and it flows. I say let's go for it together. Not, uh, not in dominion for us, but in dominion for him. I have given you authority. Let's let God into the deep. And start walking in dominion. Start walking in joy. Start walking in peace. Holy Oh God, let the fire come.